Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Thanks for stopping by. Today I have a very informative video for you. I'm going to be explaining the differences between a hard pastel and a soft pastel. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned. So a lot of you have been having questions. I've been receiving a lot of questions and there were quite a few people that wanted me to explain the difference between soft pastels and hard pastels, especially newer beginner colorists have a hard time in understanding the difference between the two. I myself had a hard time understanding how to use these two differentiating pastels. I had some hard pastels for years and I just realized after two and a half, three years, how to use them correctly. I had been using those hard pastels wrong for years and I thought something was wrong with the pastel. Well, actually it was something wrong with the user. <laughs> I just did not know how to use it. it I was using it just like I would use my soft pastel, but it seemed like the color wasn't coming out bright and it's just, it, it was not good at all. So I'm excited that I'm able to bring this information to you. And you know, I don't like bringing you information that I, I don't feel I know what I'm talking about on the subject. So I've done all the research and now I'm here to extend that to you. So let's get started by talking about what types of pastels are there? So you have your soft pastels, such as the ones that I'm putting here in front of you. These are considered your soft pastels, okay? The Moongill 64 color pastels and the Derwent Academy blendable soft pastels. And a soft pastel is usually called uh, a chalk pastel also. You can, they, you can find them under that name also though. So these are what a, a soft pastel uh, looks like. These are examples. There are many others, but the definition of a soft pastel is the traditional form of pastels and also the most used. They have a very high concentration of pigment that is held together by the least amount of gum binder as possible. As a result, they crumble very easily, but their colors are wonderfully intense. So they're very, very fragile. They're very, very blendable and easy to just get all kind of pops of color, but the downside, they are very, very fragile and they they crumble and they kind of leave dust everywhere. So that's what a soft pastel is. And the next type of pastels are pan pastels. Now I don't have any of the actual pan pastels to show you because I don't have any of those because they're super duper expensive and I just can't afford them right now. But anyway, I got the closest thing to it, which was this Jane Davenport palette pastel. It's the only difference between a chalk soft pastel and a pan pastel is that this has been molded to a pan shape. So this is in a pan. It's in like an eyeshadow pan, but it's a pan. And then the actual pan pastel brand, it's shaped and it's in a little circle, you know, pastel shape. But the definition that the internet gives about a pan pastel, it says they are a form of soft pastels like I just mentioned, but instead of being molded into sticks, they are set into pans or jars. This format allows for much less binder and probably the highest concentration of pigment. The packaging protects the pigment, reduces waste, and also allows for easy storage and transport. So there you have it. That's what a pan pastel has over the soft pastel sticks. The only difference is they're in a pan and they have more pigment because they don't have to use binders and fillers in order to keep that chalk stick, you know, sticking together. So in here, they just put a lot of pigment, very little binder. So that's what a pan pastel is. All right, our next type of pastel are hard pastels. 
And before I start talking about the hard pastels, let me show you the Prismacolor new pastels. Now I know a lot of people get um, a little confused. They say, well, the new pastels, are, are they soft pastels? Are they hard pastels? Are they medium pastels? What are they? Well, as you see here on the box, it says that uh, the new pastels are firm pastel color sticks. So they're firm pastels. <laughs> they're not hard. <laughs> they're not soft. They're smack dab in the middle. And I absolutely love, 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 love these new pastels. And look at what it says here. It says stronger than traditional soft pastels for less breakage and easier cleanup. So these don't give as much dust off as the uh, regular soft pastels. They're a little bit firmer and... I absolutely love them. They are a great alternative to your chalky soft pastels and they give off a lot of more pigment than the cheaper, you know, soft pastels. So this is this is in the middle. So that's why I wanted to just talk about this before I got into the hard pastels because this is smack dab in the middle of being in between a hard pastel and a soft pastel. So that's what that is all about. All right, so now we have your hard pastels. So the definition for a hard pastel is that they are made from the same ingredients as soft pastels, except they contain more binder and less pigment. See, that's the problem. That's why I was like, this is not working right. <laughs> I'm like, this has so much less pigment. Why is this doing, what is going on? But I finally realized how to use them to get to maximize the pigment quality. And I will share that with you very soon, if not here in the next video. So it says that this means that their colors are not as intense. Tell me about it. But they don't crumble or break as easily. Now that is complete truth. They do not crumble pretty much hardly at all. They're like coloring with a colored pencil but uh it says because they're more stable hard pastels are especially suited for drawing techniques and working on location all right so we understand that and this uh page that i'm looking at by the way it is uh art dash is dash fun.com and it's ha um backspace pastels so if you want to look this information up for yourself i'll have a link in the description of where you can go and read up on this on your own but it has a recommended uh product list and i really don't agree with their product list because they actually put the put the Prismacolor art sticks in this list, and this is not um, this is a whole different ball game, and I'm gonna explain that to you. And they also put the new pastels in this list, but I can understand why they put the new pastels because they're a firm stick and not, you know, soft. So I can understand that, but. Uh, some more examples of hard pastels that they recommend or say are hard pastels are Van Gogh hard pastels, Polychromos Faber Castell pastels, uh, Richardson semi hard square pastels, which I've never heard of. Then they have the Prismacolor art sticks and the Prismacolor new pastels. Okay, and the examples. Let me backtrack. I'm sorry. The examples of they have that they have of the pan pastels are, of course, just pan pastels. <laughs> they don't have any Jane Davenport or any of that type of um, examples, but they are pan pastels. They are pastels that are in a pan. It's a square pan, not a circle pan, but it's a pan. Then they have the quality artist quality soft pastels examples. They have the Blick. Artist soft pastels. They have the Rembrandt soft pastels. They have the student line, such as the Reeves soft pastels and the Faber Castell Studio soft pastels. And there are many, many, many more. <clears throat> it seems like they forgot to, to name, you know, 
quite a few that I actually have <laughs> in their list, but that is okay. So that's what a hard pastel is. And I don't know if that article broke down uh, what I'm about to uh, talk about, but these two pastel hard pastels here that I'm showing you, the Creta Color and the Charvin Paris, they are actually water soluble hard pastels, meaning that they can be activated with water and used as like a watercolor. So that's that. And there, I'm gonna show you examples of all of these, but that's what they're considered as hard pastels, but they're water soluble. All hard pastels are not water soluble. Case in point, my uh, example number one, <laughs> they're not water soluble. And there are actually some soft pastels that are a little water soluble. So they don't really tell you that, but you know, you test it out like I do, then you'll know. But these hard pastels are actually like the Prismacolor art sticks. Okay. They both have wax in them. And I don't know why that um, article put the Prismacolor art sticks in the line with hard pastels. I looked up on another site, the definition of hard pastels and soft pastels, what's the difference? And it mentions that a lot of your, well, no, all of your pastels don't contain wax, okay? They don't have any wax in them. They only have uh, pigments and either a binder like resin or something else. I forgot what the second one is, but it's not chalk and it's not wax. It's just resin and pigment, like pigment powder. So this saying that it's a hard pastel is kind of confusing because it actually is just the uh, lead in a pencil. So in the pencil of the Koinor pencils. So you can actually, actually say that these, the Giaconda 12 hard pastels are exactly the same as their woodless colored pencils. They're exactly, exactly, exactly the same because these, you can see it, you can probably see it on the camera. It's very waxy. It looks waxy and shiny. And there is, I can rub across it and it's a little purple coming off on my hand. That's because they're so, they're softer, but they're not, it's not chalky, you know? Um, so it's just, it's not a pastel. It's not in that category because of how they perform. They're more like a woodless color pencil. And guys, quick, quick, quick sneak peek tip. I'm going to show you how to use your woodless colored pencils just like a hard pastel you would use for your background or for larger areas. That'll be on a very, very soon future, future video. All right. So here you have the Prismacolor Art Sticks, which are very waxy. If I can get them out. <laughs> Oh, come on. They are very waxy also. And there is nothing, nothing coming off on my hand with these. So I see that these are more, way more wax than these are. So what the Prismacolor woodless colored pencils are, they are saying that this they are saying that this, the art sticks are exactly the same as your woodless colored pencils. They're just in a stick form. So these are completely different from your new pastels, which are firm pastel color sticks, and they're way, way, way more softer. But actually, guys, sadly, I ran up on the art sticks and started looking for them too late because they have discontinued making the art sticks and you cannot find them. They're so hard to find. I was just fortunate to find a seller on eBay that was selling this vintage one, but there's a new packaging. I will insert the picture here. 
there is new packaging that um you know they they made after this one because this one is from 2002 and it's made by uh, Sanford the Sanford Corporation and they've discontinued them you can't find these anymore you can only find the new pastels so I guess they you know figured no one was buying them because they didn't know how to use them but I don't think when they started making well no I think when they put them in a stick form instead of doing like you know Koinor and a lot of other companies did they confused people and people were trying to use these like a soft pastel or your regular hard pastels and they weren't working for them and you know so people got frustrated and stopped using them stopped buying them trying to get rid of them but guys if you you run up across somebody selling the bigger set of these guys send me an email send me a message on facebook let your girl know because i am on the hunt for the larger set and then i saw a larger set on amazon but the seller wants over a hundred bucks for like the 24 one and i'm like are you serious <laughs> no thank you so yeah that's what happened with the art sticks so you can't really find these, but I will include them in the demonstration anyway because they perform pretty much just like the Koinor hard pastels. So that is that. So the next type of pastel is actually... I wanted to include this chalk. It's called compressed chalk. It's called a multi pastel and it's by Generals. And the reason I got this one because I don't usually see, you don't usually see these colors uh, in, in pastels. So I got this compressed chalk, not even realizing what compressed chalk was, but it says that this is artist quality oil-free formula extra smooth pigment, um, rich, blendable, and it, it tells you how to use it. So I'm assuming that the difference between this compressed chalk is that it's a tiny bit firmer than your soft pastel chalks, but but it's not quite as firm as the new pastel color sticks. So that's what I'm assuming that what compressed chalk is. Because I tried a few and that is the conclusion that I came up on. So there you have those. Next, you have your pastel pencils. So the definition online of pastel pencils are that they give you more controlled, detailed works of art with pastels. They're very convenient, just like a pencil, but they're encased within wood. And the stick of pastel that's inside is much, 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 much thinner and has a thinner consistency. So it's between a hard and soft pastel. So I, you know, definitely can see a difference between, for say, for example, the Stabilo Carbothello and the Derwent. The Stabilo Carbothello is like super, super soft, while the Derwent pastels are a little bit firmer. And I haven't even worked with these Koi Nora pastel pencils because I forgot I had them. So moving on, we're not going to talk about that. Crash your stash 2021. <laughs> and the Fiber Castell pit pastels are a lot firmer than even the Derwent. So, and then you have the Credit Color Studio Line pastel pencils. And because it says studio line, I wonder, does that mean this is like their kind of school line or something? Because the Faber-Castell studio line of their, you know, 
pencils and pastels that's the blue box that's the more academy school version so i wonder if that's what that means but these are my least favorite pastel pencils because they're very hard and scratchy so they're the hardest the fiber castell are next in line and being hard and then your derwents are third in softness and then your Carbothello, Stabilo Carbothello are the softest. Now I have heard that the Caran Dash pastel pencils are even softer than the Stabilo. They are super duper soft. Oh, I wish I could get my hands on those. Oh my God, I wish I can get my hands on the full set of all of these. We might have to save some, some pennies or something <laughs> to try to make that happen because I absolutely love using my pastel pencils. But the Caran Dash pastels, they say, I you know did research and they say they're way softer than all of these. So that would be number one if I had it, but I don't have it. Now here, I'm showing you the Hobby Lobby brand. And these are pastel colored pencils. It says that they're high quality pastel colored pencils, oil free, long lasting pigment. So I think they're kind of trying to say that they're light fast, but mm, okie dokie. So here you have these chalk pastel sticks that are in the shape of a pencil. So they have no wood casing on them. They're just absolutely exposed pastel, you know, sticks that are sharpened at the end and shaped like a pencil. So these are pretty much chalk pastels. They're there. I would put them in the same category with the Prismacolor new pastels because they, they are a little bit firmer. So that's what we have, guys. That's all of the pastels. That's the difference. You know, that's the definition of all of your pastels. So now is the time for a little demonstration. So let's take out a piece of paper that has already gotten dirty with some chalk on it, but that's okay. And I'm going to quickly show you the difference between a hard pastel and a soft pastel and the correct way to use them or the various ways that you can use them. Now, in the next video, I'm... I'm going to share with you guys what tools I have for using my pastels. I'm going to explain and break it down, all the different tools and their usages. So we're not going to go through tools in this video. That's going to be the next video. And you can find all of these, these not tutorials, but like demonstrations. You can find all of these demonstrations in the playlist called Beginner's Guide to Beautiful and Easy Coloring, which I will link here. Guys, that playlist is growing each and every day because I wanted to sh have a place where beginning colorists and experienced colorists both can go to this one playlist, this one area, and learn the ins and outs of coloring. So, if you want to binge watch that playlist, it's growing each and every day. I'm steadily adding content to that, you know, to that playlist. I'm not featuring a lot of my older videos in that playlist because I want you guys to have the most recent and the most knowledgeable content that I can offer you. And the only way we can do that is to put the new stuff in that playlist. <laughs> so go check it out, guys. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to be testing out the Prismacolor new pastels, which are right smack dab in the middle of the firm and, and soft pastels. Then we're going to be testing out the Mungyo chalk pastels, which are super, super, super soft, and they're considered like budget friendly. And we are going to be testing out these, what they call a hard pastel. 
but are not really hard pastels. <laughs> so we're going to be testing those. Because if they say they're a hard pastel, then okay, that's what you say. That's what we're going to call you. And we are going to be testing out the Charvin Hard Pastels. And this one, guys, actually says it's light fast. Run and get this set, guys. They are very inexpensive on Amazon at the moment, like $16. I probably should order a second set. No, Nisi, resist it. Resist the urge to buy two of everything. <laughs> but I'd be so afraid, guys, that I'm going to run out and it's not going to be available or the price is going to go up and I'm going to regret not having it. <sighs> Comment below if you have that same struggle. I know I have the full set syndrome, but I also have the duplicate buying syndrome of coloring supplies. <laughs> comment below if you're struggling with that same problem <laughs> so these are the water soluble hard pastels these are the not water soluble hard pastels and then last but not least no not last but not least we have the pan pastels or the cheap rendition of a pan pastel <laughs> and next we have our pastel pencils so we are going to be trying out all of the so below. these will be what we're featuring today in this demonstration i'm going to be showing you the difference between the soft pastels the hard pastels the water-soluble hard pastels, and the new pastels, which are firmer than a soft pastel, and the pan-type pastel, and the pastel pencils. All right, so let's get to it. Okay, so we are ready to get started. So first, before I go any further, I'm going to share with you some of the tools that I will be using to apply these pastels. Now, in the next video on pastels, it's going to be called All About Pastels. And on that video, I'm going to share with you even further more tools that you can use and utilize with your pastels and also some more tips and tricks like stencils and all that fun stuff. So stay tuned for that video next. All right, guys. So your most well-known type of tools are your, let's see, cotton balls your q-tips your pom-poms and things like cosmetic wedges and cotton rounds and the next thing a lot of people use to work with their pastels are the tortillions or paper stumps and you're going to need some type of tool to scrape your pastels uh, most people use like either a knife or they would use like an exacto knife, which I don't recommend. I will not be using an exacto knife in this video. <laughs> I will be using my trusty uh, little lemon cutting knife. <laughs> and we have a cutting board here, whether you would like to scrape off uh, the powder or the pigment to a cutting board, not cutting board. Yes, it is a cutting board, but to some type of surface, if you don't want to put it directly on the page, you can put it on here and then, you know, work from here. And last but not least are these amazing finger protectors. I use these to spread my hard pastels because using cotton balls or pom-poms or sponges, it just absorbs all of the pigment and you're left with no pigment at all so i found the secret to using your hard pastels even your regular soft pastels i'm going to show you the difference between using these and using the pom-pom and the cotton balls so those are all your tools that you would normally use so i'm going to take out 
one of each so that we can test all of these out. So another tool that I forgot to mention to you is this sanding paper block, this sandpaper block. Uh, you use this to either sharpen your pastels or you can clean your tortillions off after you've used one color and you don't want that color to transfer. You need to use this sander to clean that off or sharpen your pastels. You never really want to put your pastel pencils in a pencil sharpener. Uh, even if it's a handheld sharpener, it's suggested that you sharpen them with sandpaper. So the other little thing that I forgot to mention was a brush. It's always good to have a little brush around, you know, with bristles or either a soft makeup brush. That's what I usually prefer using to get rid of any type of dust or residue that's unwanted. And I absolutely love these little tongs <laughs> that I got from Dollar Tree. They hold my uh, cotton ball or whatever it is that I'm using. They hold it so much better than my little, this is not the jewelry helper. This, this is a diamond gem holder and it has those little, you know, prongs to come out and grab the pastel, but I like using this better maybe because it I have more control because it's larger and it's not as small as like a pencil and this makes my hand hurt but I'll demonstrate using it also but this is my favorite thing to use it's just a good old-fashioned small set of tongs all right so guys let's get started so we're gonna start off with the most popular the Mungyo soft pastels So let's get these open. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to test them with the different types of sponges and so forth. Now this is a pom-pom. It's made out of like a nylon material. It's not made out of cotton. It's an actual synthetic material and you're going to see the difference how it is when you spread this compared to your cotton ball or any other method. So I'm just going to slide all this stuff over out of my way so that I can get going. All right. And I think I need something to, I guess I'll lay the dirty things over there. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. All right. Get together. Get, get myself together. Get myself together. Okay. So first, and we're going to label this Mungyo Soft. pastels and I'm going to zoom you in a little bit so you can see better we're going to do a light color and a darker color so we're going to try of course the red love 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 the red and our lighter color is going to be I guess this light blue, no, not light blue, yeah, or gray. I guess gray would be a good example. So not a light gray, but a medium color gray. That gray is just so boring. Let's do a light blue. We don't need boredom on this channel. You see my hands are getting filthy already, so keep you a pack of baby wipes a very 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 handy I don't know why I'm cleaning them because they're gonna get right back dirty but anyways all right so now we are going to put a little bit of the pastel on the paper straight to the paper by using our craft knife 
and I'm sorry guys I'm trying to compose myself and see what I'm going to do first so we are going to show you how to use the cotton ball how that will look when we spread the color around all right what is that Oh. So that's how it looks when you spread the color around with the cotton ball. All right, so next we're going to try the pom pom. We're going to administer a few scrapes there. I'm going to use this jewelry helper thingy <laughs> for the pom-pom. All right. Okay. Put all that over here. So let me get something to dust off that excess chalk. So can you see the difference, guys? Not a huge difference, but it's a little bit more pigmented and a little bit more concentrated with the use of the nylon. And it seems like when you use the cotton ball, it kind of sucks up the color, uh, the pigment, very, very easily. But the nylon does a better job of spreading the pigment around just a little bit better. So next, we're going to apply this straight to the paper. And we're going to do two of those. And straight to the paper, we're going to use our cotton ball. Try to blend that out. And I'm going over the line and I used a little bit too much pressure. I'm going straight to the paper. Soft pastels, by the way, soft pastels do not do well on going straight to the paper, like marking the paper, because they they they're just so soft they don't they don't really do well. So the first way that I showed you by applying it straight to the paper. That's the best way to apply it so you won't get any harsh marks, but it's pretty much the same. You get the same amount of pigment, so I wouldn't recommend putting it straight to the paper because of the lines, but you'll see how the hard pastels work with that same situation. Okay, so now we're going to try... Let's see, cotton round. Let's try the cotton round and see what happens. Cotton round is pretty much the same as the cotton on the cotton ball. Next, we are going to try a makeup sponge. Okay, makeup sponge is very difficult to work with just by using a sponge. It's kind of dragging the color all around and sucking it up. I would not recommend using a makeup sponge. No, thank you. And last but not least, we are going to use my absolute favorite Diamond in the Rough secret, super secret find. It's amazing. So here we go. We're going to use our so-called pastel, silicone pastel pusher. I've given it a new name because it is not a finger protector. It's a pastel pusher and that's going to be its name. And it's that's, that's it. No questions asked, company. I have re- named it and that's what it is <laughs> look at the difference guys 
of the pigments. The finger protector does not absorb any of those pigments at all. As a matter of fact, it has some pigment left on it, but it doesn't absorb the pigment like the other tools do. So I would definitely recommend that for sure. And that wasn't last. I still have the Tortillion to try and the Q-tip. So let's try those. Do that right here. Let's try our Tortillion. Okay. Tortillion, you are moving the pigment around yeah you're a little bit more difficult to work with okay so that's i wouldn't i wouldn't be too quick to work with him and i'm just going to put just a tiny bit to work with the q-tip this is mo mainly you would use a q-tip to get into small places but it's going to be pretty much the exact same as using a cotton ball. There you have it. There are your different uses of soft pastels. So I'm going to do one with the lighter color, one with our pastel pusher, as I call it, our finger protector, and one with the cotton ball. All right, so first we're going to do our cotton ball. Oh my goodness, it just soon as as soon as I put that cotton ball on that, it just it sucked it up. It sucked it all the way up. Just nothing pretty much is on the paper. Ugh, I'm so so glad I found the secret to using pastels and use a silicone applicator. Now make sure you have your finger protector clean so you won't transfer any color. And then once you've cleaned it, dry it off so you won't have any kind of wet residue. Now get ready for this guys, just be get ready to be amazed. Now I'm going to just Barely touch it and just work that all the way around. Can you see the difference? I know it's a super light color, but this one is showing up with the one with the pen, the one with the finger protector or a pastel pusher, as I call it. It's so much more vibrant. There you have it. You can see it. You can at least see this one. So, guys, what do you think? Comment below if you are just as astonished <laughs> at this discovery as I am. For forever, I've been using the cotton balls and the pom-poms. And all along, I needed, you know something silicone to push my pastel around and keep it from absorbing instead of absorbing it just push it into the paper but sometimes you might want that really really light subtle look so hey i'm not kicking my cotton fabric tools out the door i just probably won't be using them as often as i was in the past before i knew any better Okay, so we've tried our soft pastels, the mungyo. That's how they work. Now, let's move to the pan type pastels. Now, usually, now I'm trying to think, what can I use that would mimic that little tool that they have for the pan pastels that have the um the tip on the end hmm i'm trying to figure something out guys 
I'm gonna use one of these eyeshadow applicators. This was supposed to be in the next video, but hey, we will go ahead and just try it now. This is what oh, I found it, guys. This is the, the material that they use in the pan pastels. Cause I could see the texture on the pan pastel tool. This is it. Uh, we're not even going to attempt to scrape anything out of here and use the cotton balls and all that stuff because we already know what's going to happen. This is going to be between the pastel pusher and the makeup applicator. Now, more conveniently, you let me use this bright purple. More conveniently, you would probably use. Ooh my gosh <laughs> oh my goodness okay now what time is it i need to go oh my goodness i need to run to uh tuesday morning okay guys i'm taking a break i will be right back after these messages oh my goodness guys i need to go back to dollar tree and get some more of these multi-pack of eyeshadow applicators. Okay, let me start making a list. <laughs> and I need to go back to Tuesday morning and see if I can find some more of these Jane Davenport, whatever these things are, pan palettes. Because since I can't afford to try the pan pastels right now, this is gonna have to be the closest thing. All right, let's get our pastel pusher and try the same thing. See if we can get enough pigment on there and get that on the paper. No, that is not working. Okie dokie. Let's see if, now more than likely, you are not going to be scraping anything. So, no, that's not going to work. The only thing that works for this, let me put this knife down, <laughs> is going to be the eyeshadow applicator. Oh, my, and it's smooth like butter, guys. Okay. All right, we're making the list. List is made. I can stop playing with that because I'm just, I'm, I'm, whew, I'm not going to be right. Okay, let me write pan pastel. And we're going to put Jane Davenport. because we don't want anybody to get it mixed up and think I was using pan pastels because they probably would be even more vibrant. Okay, next, we are going to try the in between it all, the new pastel by Prismacolor Firm Pastel Sticks. And we're gonna use this not quite orange, but we're gonna use this red. And I'm interested to see what that applicator eyeshadow applicator is going to do with um like the um prismacolor i just used a tiny bit well no i want to put more than that on there i want to give it a fair shot i want to give the moon gills a fair shot all right here we go let's turn this cotton ball over to the red side now let's try the cotton ball. Oh, guys, that's, I'm sorry if I just hollered in your ear. <laughs> this is what I've been using. I, I always pretty much use the um, Prismacolor, but it's still not as vibrant as even these, maybe because it's a different color too. But that's this is the method that I've been pretty much using is you know using my Prismacolor Firm Pastels and they work out just a little bit better when you use um, a cotton round or something. That's why I wasn't upset when I was using it. Like, oh, there's no pigment. Yeah, there was enough pigment. And see, in this nylon one, it does not like suck up or absorb all of the pigment. There's still a lot of pigment left on the page that's gonna have to be dusted off because it, the page, the tooth, has just taken all of the pigment it can take and I'm just 
rubbing it around now. So do you see the difference in those two? Comment below if you see a difference. All right, now you're ready to get your socks blown off now. I kind of move that. Let me take my broom and dust it all back together. It sure does look like a little broom, doesn't it? Do, 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 housework, coloring housework. All right, now we're gonna, oh, oh pastel pusher is dirty. Got a little purple on it. Forgot about that. All right, clean it off, dry it off. Now, oh, the, I get so much satisfaction <laughs> out of this. This is, this is ridiculous. It just, it just feels so good. I wish you could feel what I'm feeling. <laughs> Don't make me get the singing line king in here. Can you feel it, guys? How about some Jackson 5? Can you feel it? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Look at that! Guys. <sighs> it's just like butter. Ooh, let's try it with our eyeshadow applicator, okay? To see if that... If I need to go buy three packs of that instead of one more pack. <laughs> because that is mimicking the Jane, not Jane Davenport. That is mimicking the applicator in your pan pastel set. Oh, yeah. We gotta go to Dollar Tree. Why am I doing all this singing tonight, guys? I'm, I'm super pumped. Because... I'm recording this and I am experiencing this. As a matter of fact, we're going to start using our um, cotton balls and our, um, what is this thing here? Pom-poms. We're going to start using those as things to get off the dust, to get the dust off. Because they're, they're no good for sp spreading the pigment for the most part, unless you want a soft look. And I don't like my brush getting dirty like this. I'm gonna have to use my black brush. I don't want my brush to have red stuff on the end. Oh, don't I sound like a little diva? Oh gosh, we're gonna have to clean that with like some bleach or something. Oh my goodness, guys. Can you feel it? I feel it. I feel it, guys. <laughs> All right. Ooh, I just don't, I don't know what, I'm too razzled and dazzled to go any further, guys. I, I know you're like, look, Nisi, you better get to swatching. You hush up and do what you need to do. <laughs> Next, we're going to use the pastel pencils. And I need to get all of this dusty dust. It's getting everywhere. I need to figure out a better way to get my dust off and don't be, be careful guys. If you have like allergies or asthma, be really, really careful with pastels because they are a dust monster. You know, no matter what you do, how you try, dust is going to end up somewhere in the air. So just be careful if you have those issues. I have those issues, but I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> oh pencil I better say pastel pencil because I think Stabilo Statler no Stabilo I think Stabilo makes pencils I they do so pastel pencil all right we're going to keep in line with the red and I don't need to am I steady hitting this camera I'm so sorry if I'm, I've shaken you guys without knowing, but I'm steady hitting this camera and, and not paying attention. I need to put a barrier up between me and the camera stand so I won't be shaking you guys up and making you throw up. All right, guys. So here we have our pastel pencil. That's a hard layer. Here's a soft layer. And I think that's all I'm going to do is hard and soft. Well, I probably need to do another hard layer. 
you know you're pressing hard when you start to see the dust, the pencil dust. So there's a soft layer. Cause we're going to use, actually, yeah. Yeah, I do usually use some type of pastel pusher or tool to blend in my uh, pencil work. So that's how I look before I blend it in. Now I'm going to use my pastel pusher. Okay, now I'm gonna use my pastel pusher on the light handed. Oh, I love that, guys. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Now, just for the hay of it, we're going to use the cotton ball and see what happens. Because that's what I normally use is the cotton ball. And that's horrible. That's absolutely horrible. Guys, do you see the difference between using your pastel pusher and a cotton ball? Oh, my goodness. This is outrageous. Outrageous. It's not outrageous. It's outrageous, guys. All right, now let's try our hard pastels by Koi Noor. And we're going to go with the reddest of all red. Now, I, like I told you, I can feel the wax in this product. I just, I feel it. Even though it's getting off on my hand, maybe that's just the dye, but there is no chalk in this like it's not chalky so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a little bit to the paper wait a minute let me write down what this is koi nor uh oh i spelled koi nor did i spell it wrong yes needed to Oh, and I need an H here. Ko e nor. Guys, you gotta help me, help me, help me. I'm getting, it's getting late. <laughs> My brain is lapsing. All right, so we put one down here. Put, we have put an application of it down here. Now, let me show you how I've been using hard pastels in the past. And then I'm gonna show you how I learned better. All right, so here is our cotton ball. And, well, <laughs> that's not a good example because that looks pretty good. <laughs> well, that's what I was doing apparently, but I was doing it with like a light color and it was not turning out that vibrant. You know what? We We not gonna play this game. I'm going to get the actual product that I was having the trouble with. And you're not gonna make me look like a crazy person on this video, on this on this camera here with all these hundreds and thousands and billions and millions of people watching us. Yeah, I'm not gonna let you do that. <laughs> all right, so this looks like the closest color. Now these credit color hard pastels, these are hard pastels also, but they are way more chalky. They have a much more chalk consistency than per se the Koi Noor, what is this thing here? Hard pastels. Okay, this is going to embarrass me also. Where am I put it? I'm, I'm gonna put it right here. This is way more chalky. It's getting ready to embarrass me. I can already feel it. I can feel it already. Okay. Okay, so maybe it's, yeah, that, yes, it did not embarrass me. I told the truth, guys. When I look at this stick, I want for this color to be represented. And this light burgundy is not the dark, rich color of this stick, okay? And you know the color should be true because it's, it's, not a, it's not a barrel, it's not on a barrel or anything. It's it's the actual pigment. So I was like, wait a minute. Why, why is the pigment not showing up like as vibrant as it should? Well, I'm going to show you guys right now. We're doing the credit color hard pastels, but these are the watercolor pastels. So 
I guess I will just show you these instead. Well, I'm going to show you the other hard pastels that's water soluble too. Kind of like a review video. And by the way, comment below, guys. I need your help. Do you guys like these longer? Why am I waving this knife around like I'm just, oh, some type of serial killer? <laughs> Put that down. Okay. Um, do you guys like these longer chatty demonstration type review videos or do you like a demonstration video that gives you straight to the point advice and demonstration i know you guys have already commented on my other i need your help video and you said you like when we demonstrate when i why, why am i saying we who else is here when i demonstrate <laughs> when i demonstrate the products not demonstrate but when i show you in haul videos you like when I, you know, open it up, talk about it, even swatch it or something. Do you like these type of longer videos? Because I notice my watch time and my analytics and a lot of people are clicking off after like 15 or 20 minutes after my video. So I don't want to keep making these hour long drawn out videos. And you guys are like, okay, that's enough, Nisi. I'm fast forwarding to the end to when you get to the point. <laughs> Or do you like Miss Chitty Chatter? Okay, usually I don't talk this much. Who, who am I kidding? Who am I kidding? I'm kidding myself. I kid myself often, guys, because I laugh at myself. That's why I'm kind of funny, because I laugh at my own jokes. Okay? <laughs> okay, moving on and not waving this knife around any longer. Let me show you guys how the Creta Color, I'm tickled now, how the credit color heart has sales. When I finally figured this out, guys, I was blown away. I was just, I was like, because I was getting that and I was like, that's not, that's not it. That, no, that shouldn't be it. Get ready. Get ready to, did you, did your socks get blown off up here? Put your socks back on and they're getting ready to get blown off again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we ah! I'm trying not to I'm trying not to scream in you guys ears. <laughs> guys. Guys, 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 guys. It sounds like I'm saying lies, 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 lies. Guys, this is how that color supposed to look. It's not quite as dark as the actual stick, but it's so much better than when I used the cotton ball. So guys, I'm telling you to go get some more finger pushers. I'm gonna have to get me about three, four more packs of those finger pushers because, now, 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 hold on. Before you get to talking about Nisi and saying Nisi is a hoarder, Nisi is greedy, Nisi don't go buy them all up from the next person that might need them. Guys, I want to have a finger protector for every finger of my hand. Because <laughs> I don't want to keep cleaning this off. And what if, uh, well, I guess I could, but wouldn't it be just nice if I just had like, 10 of them laid out here and I can just use the red and I won't have to clean it off. And then I just... talk me out of it, guys. Talk me out of it in the comment. Rain me back in and say, Nisi, say, Nisi, remember, crash your stash 2021. Remember, see, that's why I started that tag because I need to just keep every time I make a video. I need to keep that in my mind. Use your stuff that you have. Stop going back and buy. Look, two packs of these finger pushers is enough, Nisi. Why am I sitting here scolding myself in front of you guys? Hmm. <laughs> Maybe I'm trying to beat you to the punch, huh? No, I know you guys are super sweet and you love to see me just drain my bank account. <laughs> You love to see, you love to see new items and you love to see when I haul stuff. So I know you guys aren't going to be any help. <laughs> no, 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 no. Seriously, on a serious tip, you guys are the only ones in this world that understands 
this struggle. You understand my struggle. You don't judge me. And that's why I'm here with you. Finger pusher and all. That's why I'm here with you because you be like, Nisi, go get it. Go go get another pack of them finger protective staff and get that. <laughs> That's why I love you guys. That's why you are so amazing. <laughs> All right. Okay. 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 Oh, I didn't do the Koi Nora one. Okay. Wait a minute. Let's get some more happiness and satisfaction right here. All right. Okay. All right, there we go. And now, wipe that off for the ah uh, moment. Oh my, this is so, just so satisfying to spread this pigment around with this finger pusher. Look, before I finish spreading the pigment around, look at how, can you see that? Focus. There you go. Can you see this? Let me let me do it up close. Look at that. Oh wait, look at the pigment. Look how it spreads. And look how it's just I can push it into the paper. Oh. Ah. Ooh. Ah. Oh. Ah. Okay, this the pigment on a hard pastel and a chalk pastel are pretty much the exact same. You know how when you put how your paper can take all it can take of color pencil, this the pastels do the same thing. The paper cannot take any more. So I'm I'm left with with this right here. That's why if we were doing a larger area, we can pull that pastel down and just use it on, the, you know, another area. But that little area right there was completely saturated. It couldn't take any more. It was like, I'm done. Don't, don't try to put any more pigment on me, okay? Now for one more trick with the hard pastels. Now this is where I learned... This is the first way, correct way that I learned to use hard pastels. I was like, that scraping it off and then trying to spread it around with a cotton ball, that was not working. It was taking too much of the pigment away. This is what I learned to do with the credit color. Now, I don't know how good this is going to work out with this Koi Noor stick because the credit color is way more chalky. So applying it directly to the paper on with the stick, like a pencil. Let's see what that does. Oh no, that 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 doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, that's no, that's a no-no. So don't do that with the what are these things called? Koinor heart pastels. Now let's see what happens when we do that. Where are we gonna do it at? Right here. I actually need to write this down. Preta color. I'm gonna do it right here. Now this is this should work. Don't embarrass me, chalk pastel. Don't you do it. I'm not kidding. You better work. You know how when you tell your kids, like in the, in the store or in the grocery store, don't you embarrass me when we go in this store. I mean it. <laughs> Now, these are my children. This this hard pastel. Don't you embarrass me on this video. You better work right, okay? So, this is how I learned how to see. Uh, thank you. See, my coloring supplies, they love me. Am I in frame? Yes. They love me. They're my children. And they, they're obedient. <laughs> this is how I learned how to use my hard pastels you see that guys so this wait a minute i'm doing stuff oh should i cut that part out i should because i'm crazy guys and that's a completely different color what color did i even use i'm supposed to be applying this thing directly to the page <laughs> 
not what I did on my picture. What am I doing? I, I did the scraping method. Oh, but see this, ah, see, I, like I said, my coloring supplies are like my children and they're obedient. They don't embarrass me in front of thousands of people, okay? <laughs> so, you see this? This is what happens when you use the Credicolor Hard Pastels and then you apply it directly to your page because I did that and it gave me so much more pigment but then I, you get even more pigment when, when you you get even more pigment when you scrape off the chalk. But you see how the Koinor hard pastels they wrong for calling these hard pastels. They may be a little softer than the woodless pencils, but they got a lot of wax in them. And you see what happened here? I applied the Credicolor hard pastels to the paper, and I applied the Koinor hard pastels to the paper, and look at the differences you got pencil strokes galore but on the credit color one no pencil strokes so so super smooth this is again guys i'm giving you a two in one deal here a two in one video not only are you getting a demonstration and a tutorial of how to use pastels you can the review video too so a package deal yeah we love to save some time. Just go ahead and get it all over with on one video, okay? All right. Now, I would use the Charvin, but I don't have to because I used the Credicolor in place of the hard pastels that are water soluble. So what we're going to do here is we are going to apply some water to show you how they dissolve or how they, yes, that's the word, dissolve in water. So I have a lot of dust on this one. So we're just going to work with that dust, right? That's too much water. Just gonna work with that excess dust to see if this will activate for us. That is way too much water, Nisi. What am I doing? way 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 too much water okay it's okay it's going to be okay so you see how it activates in water we just you know just take that whole thing and just make it out of a watercolor situation and the more pigment you put on there let me get you where you can really see what's going on the more pigment you put on there, the deeper your colors will be. All right. So, that's it, guys. What do you think? Did we have fun today? Did you have fun watching Nisi mess some stuff up and, and discover things? <laughs> Guys, thank you so, 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 so much for joining me today. This has been an absolute joy to sit here and hang out with you guys. I know that I'm on the other side of the, you know, screen, but when I read your comments, it becomes, because I've rewatched my own videos, you know, just to see what kind of experience the viewers, you guys are getting. So I rewatch my videos and when I see your comments and I'll respond to every comment just about, I'm actually interacting with you guys. So this is literally hanging out with you. You know, the way you communicate back to me is through your comments. And while I'm watching the video, rewatching it, I have your comments rolling in my head and I'm like, yeah, that's right. Let me answer this person and say this, this, that, or the other. So we're having an interchange of conversation. So we are hanging out together. Yes. And it has been so, so wonderful to just, you know, chat and be with people who understand this love, this passion that we have for this hobby. So guys, please don't forget to give this video a big old thumbs up if you enjoy this content. Please don't forget to give this video a big old thumbs up if you just enjoy adult coloring, period. 
that really helps the channel to get out there, to get noticed so more people can find it. And make sure, share this video. Share it on your social media, on your Twitter, on your Instagram, on your Facebook, on your TikTok, wherever you can share it, share it so that other people can find this video and they can know the difference between hard pastels and soft pastels and what is the best way to use them. How can you achieve more pigment? So guys, please subscribe to the channel. It will really, really, really mean a lot to me. It will really help my channel out if you subscribe and become a regular over here at the Dollar Diva family, okay? And also guys, do not forget to ring that bell. Yes, so you will be notified of each and every video that I release. You don't wanna be left out in the unknown. You want to be notified, okay? <laughs> so guys, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining me. And as always, happy coloring. Bye.